After getting up again, Frederick nods to himself and clenches his fist. No turning back now. He walks through the door into the alien's lair. His heart is racing, and he can hear the blood rushing for his ears. As he takes in the chaotic makeshift laboratory, he is surprised at what he finds. Beside the body he already saw, he can make out two other ones, one male and the other one female. Both of them are lying on the floor, but they don't seem to have been in any kind of panic. Their posture suggests they were probably asleep when they passed. When he looks to the far end of the room, away from the bodies, he can make out the source of all his troubles. A roughly one meter large chunk of jagged gold metal with a bismuth-like organic shape. There are about a dozen thick, root-like structures extending from it, most of them vanishing into the ceiling or the walls, and the entire room is covered in a thin layer of the golden dust. What the? He has never seen anything like it. Just looking at it gives him a terrible feeling, as if he was looking at a crime against the rules of nature, something supposed to never be found. A sense of awe, terror, and dread overcomes him, as if he gazed into the eyes of a cosmic being, too complex for the human mind to process and it gazed back. A single thought dominates his mind, accompanied by a terrible gut feeling. This is wrong. His little episode is interrupted by yet another wave of static pulses, probably to get his attention. Right, focus. He shakes his head and looks at his display again. Are you still alive? alive? Yes. He pauses a bit, knows about the whole situation. Why are you asking? Do you trust now? Now? I'm not sure if I should trust you, but I'm at least glad that I'm still alive. So thanks, I guess. He really doesn't know how to feel about this whole situation. Why did you need me to go inside again? To help us... us... Help you? You need my help? Are you serious? He chuckles. Y yes yes Alright. And if I help you, you will let me go, correct? Correct, correct. Oh boy. Okay, I've got a question though. Can you only really write messages? I'm feeling a bit dumb just talking to myself here. The static pulses randomly again. Oh, so that is you trying to communicate. Okay, I can't make any sense of that. It worked with... with the others... others. What others? He asked cautiously. The one called Zabrov understood, understood. Zabrov? He tries to remember anything related to that name. Closing his eyes, Frederick tries to think back to what he already found out. The researchers. One of the three researchers that came here. Wait, you said she could understand you? Y yes. Okay, but where is she now? I here. Where is here? Frederick doesn't immediately see anything, so he scans the room for any signs of where it could be. And at the other side of the room, he spots a tiny red light, flashing on the suit of the body he saw first. So that's Miss Zabrov. Yes, yes. I'm going to take a look at her. Maybe I can figure out why she could understand you. Just to make sure, touching her won't kill me, right? Yes, yes. He steals himself and approaches the body that's slumped against the wall. Like all three of them, she wears a standardized undersuit without any Eva gear on. Wiping a bit of the dust away from the nameplate, his Geiger counter ticks a few times again. The now clearly readable name plaque reads Zabrov, written in capital letters. What he also notices is the sheer age of their equipment. Those suits have been discontinued easily more than 15 years ago, but I guess that makes sense, huh? Wait, maybe. He searches the suit's wrist for any kind of user interface, and... After a bit of searching, finds physical button controls. Okay then, this gotta be a pre-PV era suit. As far as I know, they had low power computing and lots of rugged tech designed to take a beating. Why does she understand that thing, but I can't? His mind starts racing, crash before the body of Ms. Zabrov as he tries to come up with an answer. CPU can't be it, they were binary as well. Speakers work the same way too. Come on, why does she understand it? Until suddenly an idea. Maybe it's their radios. Perhaps they were using different broadcasting styles. Um, when you talked to her, did you use a pulsing signal or something else? We changed the speed of the signal signal. Bingo. They used analog radios. 
Alright, I'm switching over to FM. I should be able to understand you now, only need to get the frequency right. He looks for an adjustment knob on Ms. Zabro's suit and finds one. Okay. 135.7 megahertz, same as she used. Say something. Can you understand this now? What just came out of his speakers can only be described as an unholy, chaotic collage of voices, countless different snippets of sentences from various people, stitched together. Some of them are shouting, others are calm, and some are desperate, on the verge of crying. Holy hell! Yeah, I can understand you. He turns his volume down a good bit. Good. Now for our case. We want to get away from here. The chaotic shouting will need some getting used to but at least Frederick can now properly talk things out. All right, so you want to get away from here, just like me. Um, before I do that, I need to ask you a question. Did you actively kill those people? Yes. What? What the fuck am I supposed to say now? Okay. Why? He tries his best to hide his nervousness, but fails miserably. We didn't know better. At the time, we didn't know about the outside, as a result, we killed them. So, you killed them by accident? Yes. And it wasn't your intention to kill them? Yes. You know, I need better proof than that. For all I know, you could be lying to me. Why should we be lying to you? So I'll cooperate and take you with me? Why should you not take us with you? If you kill them willingly, taking you with me would pose a risk far too great for me to leave from here. I'd rather die here than endanger my entire species. We are not lying to you. Okay. Do you have any... any kind of proof of that? Come on, give me something. I need solid evidence. Killed them willingly would be risk. I'd endanger my entire species. If we killed them, existence at risk. Something about the fact that that thing just repeated a good chunk of his last sentence rubbed Frederick the wrong way. Gotta admit, though, they are making a good point. If they don't know anything about the outside world, why should they risk their entire existence just to attack some strange unknown beings. Okay, so you're saying that killing them would have endangered your existence. That makes sense. What is your goal when you get away from here? Do you want to grow or do you want to gain knowledge? What do you want? We want to experience outside. You're bored, aren't you? I will be too, especially when you consider how long you've been here alone. Yes. He doesn't want to admit it, but the arguments that thing uses make sense. Why should it be hostile from the get-go? And why should it be obsessed with expanding just for the sake of it? If it really is sentient, even sapient, then it would like to experience things, receive new stimuli, just like every intelligent being. Curiosity is something invaluable, and something about this resonates with Frederick. It having a desire to experience new things suddenly makes it a lot less scary to him. Okay, okay, I'm going to help you, but I need to find a way to transport you because the way you are right now, you're way too big and heavy for me. We cooperate and you take with? It used my words again. Yes. I need your help so I can take you with me. I have read that you can change your form. Could you try to get smaller? We cannot do that. Shit. Okay, how about getting a transport? There should be some equipment for that around. We have better plan. Fuck it, I'm going to trust you. Frederick chuckles as he hears his own sentence used again. Something about it using that sentence, just then, made it seem human. That it is just another scared being that wants to get out of here, just like him. But suddenly, Frederick's Geiger counter starts ticking rapidly. Panicked, he looks around. Oh god, what is it this time? You take with you. Now, leave, or get killed. We do not want you get killed. Leave. He spots a roughly fist-sized chunk of the metal, separating from the large main structure, falling on the ground. You can actually hear a muffled thunk as it touches down. Okay, don't need to tell me twice. He quickly grabs a surprisingly heavy chunk and runs out of the room. His Geiger counter practically screaming at him to get out of there, now. What did you do? Hello? Are you still there? Doesn't matter, I can worry about that later. Now, the airlock. He makes his way back through the trash door, as fast as the loon the gravity allows him. After exiting the room, he takes a sharp turn by grabbing onto the doorframe and makes a run for it. Slowly, the ticking of his Geiger counter dies down. He navigates the chaotic main room, jumps over toppled chairs, avoids the larger dust mounds, and, as he arrives at the entryway, 
He could already see the incredibly bright lunar surface, beckoning him to leave this place. He stops and takes a look at the golden chunk in his hand, squinting his eyes because of the extreme change in brightness. Thank you.